So good morning, everybody. I'm Cantor Lizzie Shamash coming to you from Philadelphia on this Monday. However, um, it finds you. We hope you are well. A couple of announcements from IJS. Please mark your calendars and register to join us next Monday, a week from today, June 21st from 8 to 9 p.m. for an evening of gratitude as we thank our teachers um, for this, this tremendous year of work. And Adi will put that link in the chat for registration. There it is. Thank you, Adi, so that you can join us. It's going to be very special. We put a lot of work into preparing it, so we hope you can join us. Today's props, if you've just hopped on, please have a strap, uh, a block, a blanket, and a chair is optional. We're going to start seated. That could be on the floor for you or in a chair. Today I'll model the chair. But however you are, just snuggling in ground your sitting bones, let your spine be tall. So welcome on this fourth of Tammuz. We had Rosh Chodesh at the end of last week and we look today to Parshat Chukat. Chukat meaning laws and statutes. And we'll do a little study in a moment, but First, let's climb into the body and just notice how we're doing today. So we'll start with a little bit of cat and cow, a little bit of arching and curling. So as you inhale, begin to lift the chest, roll to the front of the sitting bones. You can draw the shoulder blades toward each other and take the hands back along the thighs. Take the gaze up. And as we exhale, curling, drawing the navel to the spine, Crown of the head goes forward, tailbone forward. As we inhale, we shift, we arch, lift. And taking this in your own time, exhaling, curling, really draw that navel to the spine and let the hands come forward as you do so. Back and forth, inhaling as you arch and exhaling as you curl. Finding your own rhythm. Pausing anywhere you need to that feels really good, that just needs a little bit of space to be held. And as you're ready, coming back to center, to neutral, tall spine, pausing here, and let the right ear come to the right shoulder. Let the head be heavy, let the shoulders drop, and just feel your way in. And let the jaw be easy. Let the skin of the face soften. If you like, you can take your right arm up and over the head, give a little extra tug to the head, continue to drop that left shoulder. You might even extend those left fingertips away. And breathe here so you feel some sensation, perhaps building in the right side of the neck. And then release, inhale the head back up through center and exhale as you allow the left ear to drop towards the left shoulder. Good, so shoulder blades down. Letting the head be heavy, letting the jaw be easy. If you like, you can take the left hand up and over in some way. Giving a little extra stretch to the neck and extending through those right fingertips. Long, smooth, easy breaths. Just beginning to drop in, being really gentle with yourself, setting 
a kavana that you will treat this body, this beautiful body with some compassion for the next 45 minutes and then inhaling and releasing, finding center once again. Inhale, the right arm up, and you might take the right arm or just let the forearm drop on your head as, as, what, as whatever works best in your shoulder. And as you exhale, taking a side bend over to the left. Let that right sitting bone be nice and heavy, opening up the right side of the rib cage, breathing. Let the head go. Inhale as you come up through center, windmill the arms, and we'll exhale to the other side. It's a nice, easy side bend. Let the breath inhabit the torso. Notice what you feel. And then with an inhale, whenever you're ready, come on back up through center. Let the hand come down and let's just take some shoulder rolls, inhaling the shoulders up towards the ears. And as you exhale, bring the shoulder blades together, the elbows back, let the shoulder blades slide down the back. So just nice and slow and easy, inhaling up and exhaling back and down a few times. A reminder that you are your own best wisdom teacher. So if at any time I'm doing something in this class that doesn't work for you, please, please full permission to take what you need. That might mean moving a little faster, spicing it up a little. It might mean slowing down. It might mean coming out of something or doing something else entirely or just resting. But please take stewardship uh, and you have full permission to do so, to really listen in and see what's needed in your own body as we, as we practice together today. And let the shoulders come to rest. Take an inhale, fill the torso. And as we exhale, we're gonna twist, spinning from the middle over to the right. Let the hands rest wherever feels comfortable for you. It's a nice, easy twist, nothing too dynamic. Lengthen the spine. Take the neck, the head, the gaze with the rest of the spine, perhaps gazing over that right shoulder. And then inhale back to center and exhale right from center, spin the other direction, twisting to the left. And just exploring this first twist of the practice, sensing the rib cage, the sitting bones, the length of the spine, the spine which is so life-giving. And then as you're ready, come on back to center and pause. You might keep the eyes open and soft Soften the gaze, or you might close the eyes. Just feel within and note any sensation of body, any mind state, any heart state. How are you feeling emotionally right now? Touch down if you sense. You may sense nothing, and that's okay too. But if you notice what is bubbling up or what is present in any soft or strong way. Just notice if there's any directive about what's needed, what you need today. A word, a phrase, maybe something to carry you through practice. Just noticing what would be nourishing for today. A little bit of teaching. Feel free to keep your eyes closed if you like or open. Just staying with your 
with your bodily sensation as we look to a little bit of teaching. So in this, in this Torah portion, chukat, laws, statutes, life and death are very, very close. And there are some things in this Parsha that don't seem maybe related to each other, but we see actually that they are. So we start out with the laws around how we handle a corpse, right? And, uh, and what is required, what is permitted. And then we move on to the death of Miriam and the death of Aaron. So this discussion of, of death is prominent, this, this fine line between life and death. And then there's also a lot in this portion around water. And I wanna look at that. So we have the death of Miriam and then the death of Aaron, which is also included in that is the announcement of the future death of Moses. So all three siblings, we're getting into a full generational change, changeover in this portion. So when Miriam dies, the Torah doesn't actually say much. In Numbers uh, chapter 20, verses 1 and 2, it says the Israelites arrived in a body at the wilderness of Tzin on the first new moon, and the people stayed at Kadesh, right? So the place they stayed, Kadesh, already connoting holy, right? A holy place. And then it says Miriam died and was buried there. That's it. And the next verse says the community was without water. So Miriam died and was buried there. The community was without water. So the Midrash tells us that there was something called Miriam's well. And this was water which traveled with the Israelites through the desert. And not only did it provide them physically, provide them water, it also had healing powers. Um, this Maim Chaim had spiritual power for healing. And that, that well at the time of her death dried up. So Talmud Ta'anit 9a tells us this. It's really interesting. Rabbi Yose, son of Rabbi Yehuda, says, three good sustainers rose up for the Jewish people during the exodus from Egypt, and they are Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. And three good gifts were given from heaven through their agency, through their zechut, their merit. And these are the well of water, the pillar of cloud, and the manna. He elaborates, the well was given to the Jewish people in the merit of Miriam. The pillar of cloud was in the merit of Aaron, and the manna was given in the merit of Moses. When Miriam died, the well disappeared as it stated. So I love that, that each of the siblings had their own, own supernatural power, essentially, that followed them. So back to water, right? Miriam dies, there's no water. The Israelites complain. And God tells Moses, of course, speak to the rock that it, will, that it will obey you and emit water. But what does Moses do? God tells Moses and Aaron, what does Moses do? He strikes the rock, right? In his anger, in his intense passion, out of his own ego, out of his own fear. The Israelites are complaining. He's annoyed, right? And for this, God says, Aaron and Moses, you're not going to enter the land, so we have a little later now the, this, this beautiful ritual scene of Aaron's death where they go atop Mount Hor and Moses strips Aaron of his vestments and places those vestments on Aaron's son, Eleazar, and uh, Aaron is mourned for 30 days, right? And that's where we get our, our period of Shloshim, the 30 day period after Shiva for mourning. So all of this around water, and then it comes up again later on in the portion as well. So water is life, maim chayim, living waters, and the body is made up actually more than half water, up to 60% water. So our wellspring is right here, right? We need to uh, pay attention to our own living waters and drop into our own embodiment, our own literal wellspring. And that's really what we do in our practice, right? Our, our practice is an attention practice to just to drop in, to feel, right? Because we're on the side of life right now, not of death, to feel this livingness within us. That's really all our yoga practice is, right? It's not an ego practice to try and get our, to fold over and try to get our forehead to our shins, but a practice of becoming more alive, really attuned to, uh, to Maim Chaim. 
So I want to just pose the question for our practice today. What is most nourishing for you? On the mat, off the mat? Both, right? Because this practice on the mat is leading us to the yoga of our lives. What is most nourishing? What is most life-giving? Where is your maim chayim? And I thought we might look at some poses that help to elongate us, to elongate the body. So as you're ready, let's come to stand and have your strap not too far from you. We're gonna use it in a moment. But first we're just going to warm up the joints a little bit. So a little bit of um, moving through the feet, kind of a prancing a little bit from side to side. Bend the knee, just move along the whole bottom of the foot. You might even come over the tops of the toes. Get a few cracks out of your toes. I just feel a little bit of side to side and you can even kind of involve your hips in that. Just feeling through the bottom of the foot. And then bending the knees, just feel the knees, the ankles. And slowly as you exhale, bend the knees, inhale and straighten. And coordinate the breath. And then pause, take a little massage with the hands around the kneecap. And then we'll take the knees in a small circle. We might bring the feet toward each other. In one direction, a few times, and then reverse direction, making a circle with the knees. And just waking up to what's alive in the body respect for these joints and joy <laughs> whatever state we find them in we could have some joy that they work or semi work for us and then coming on up taking the hands to the hips and just bringing the hips side to side so we'll inhale through center and exhale the hips over to one side and inhale through center and exhale other side back and forth Inhale, exhale. You can let the torso follow as however it would like. And then last time and come back to center and we'll take the hips in a circle. So start small. Inhale as the hips come forward and the torso comes back. Exhale as the hips go back, torso comes forward. You can widen the circle as you go, finding uh, towards that outer edge, getting a little more sensation through the hips if you like. Take care with the lower back as you go. And then pause. Back to center and we'll go the other way again, starting small. So inhale, the hips come up, the chest maybe lifts up and exhale as the hips go back and chest comes forward. Just being, practicing, being right here in the sensation of the hips in this flow. And then as you're ready, come back to center. See that you have some space around you. We're gonna swing a little bit. So take the hips a little bit wider than hip width. And we're gonna swing from side to side. Just keep it low at first. And we're gonna exhale as you come to each side. So you can even make that a little bit uh, louder as you fully expel air like this. Very intentional. And 
And you can start to go a little faster if you like. And let the arms really be heavy and swing. They might even kind of slap against your upper arms, against your back body. Whatever tempo works for you. And then begin to slow down as we come to pause back at center and notice any building of aliveness, of sensation, any kind of vibration or pulsating through the body. Noticing what's there. And then we'll pick up our strap. So we use props to get some proprioceptive information, right? That's a fancy way to say that anytime we use a prop, we can get some more, because we're touching something, we can get some more information to come back to the body. So we're gonna take the arms nice and wide on the strap, right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna inhale up and then exhale back. So if I just hold the strap slack, it doesn't really give me any information at all. I might as well not have anything, right? But if I take the strap wide and pull it as if you're pulling it apart, right? Feel right away how a little more sensation, some information comes to you through the arms. So with this pulling apart, you can also uh, draw the shoulder blades down the back and maybe feel some engagement through the lat muscles over here, latissimus dorsi, that kind of hold the upper back in, support you. And then with that pulling out of the strap and the drawing down of the shoulder blades, making space between the ears and the shoulders. We're gonna inhale and bring the arms up overhead. Continue to draw those shoulder blades down so that the shoulders don't hike up on you. And then as we exhale, we come over the top and go back. Now, if you notice it's very jerky in your shoulders, you widen the arms on the strap. But we're continuing to keep the strap nice and taut. So inhale then as you come back up, keep a nice little bend on the knees, keep it easy through the body, and exhaling, coming forward. Inhale, press the feet down as the arms come up. Again, pulling the strap apart, so much length, so much width across the backs of the shoulders, tops of the shoulders, exhaling down and inhaling up, easy in the neck, easy in the jaw, exhaling down. Keep that going one more time, inhale, come on up, exhale back. Feel the openness across the front of the chest, a little bit of stretch maybe, Inhale as we come up, pull that strap apart, draw those shoulder blades down, stay integrated, right? And exhale as we come down. And pause for a moment, you might take a roll of the shoulders in any way you like. And now we're gonna do a side stretch with the strap, same, same idea here. Here, you don't have to take the strap perhaps quite as wide and see how this will work with your own shoulder mobility, but we're gonna inhale up so that the arms are up overhead and see that you can see the hands in your peripheral vision, right? You don't wanna to be too far back and strain your shoulders. Press the feet down, stretch the hands away from each other, so make the strap nice and taut. Inhale, lengthen through the torso. Draw the shoulder blades down as you lengthen the fingertips away. And then as you exhale, we're gonna take a side bend over to the right. Press into the feet. Pull the strap apart like you could break it. And then inhale up through center and exhale over to the left. So pressing into the feet, don't collapse, extend in all four directions. 
Inhale up. You can take this in your own time. If I'm going a little too slow for your breath, we're exhaling to the side and inhaling up through center. Go as little or as far as you like with these side bends, right? It might be just very small action and that's great too. Inhaling up through center and exhaling to the side. So we're trying to really stay connected from the center. We investigated the solar plexus. If you were here with us last week, we want to find that connection from the center radiating out kind of like uh, a star here with five points, the feet, the hands, the crown. So press away from center as you explore this side to side. And then come on up and bring the hands down, release the strap. Can Oh, actually, just hold on to the strap. We're going to do one more thing with it. Just give a little shake out. Okay, we're going to look at chair pose or fierce pose. Some call it, some call it awkward pose. We're going to take the block between the thighs. Most of us probably want the block on its narrow, um, narrow setting there. If your hips are, are, are wide, uh, wider than that, you'll want the middle. You'll see what, what goes with your hips, right? So you basically want the feet hip width apart. I'll go from the side just to show you. And then we're going to take our hands to the strap again. You can take them as closer together. It'll be a little more on the shoulders and wider will give you a little more room. So we're going to inhale the arms up. It could be shoulder height or higher. And then we're going to exhale and sit it down. Good. Inhale, press into the feet, straighten. And exhale, bring the strap down. If you want a little bit of support or balance, you can be near a wall so that when we come back, the buttocks come to the wall. So inhaling the arms up. Exhale, sit down, squeeze the block. Inhale, press into the feet to stand. Crown rises. Exhale, arms down. Pull that strap. Good. So squeezing the block, widening the strap. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, sit it back. Thighs down. Tailbone back. Inhale, press into the feet to stand. And exhale, strap down. Again, like that. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, sit. Inhale, press to stand. Exhale, arms down. This time we're going to stay if you like, or you can just keep flowing with it if you're enjoying that. Inhale, the arms up and exhale, sit. So either you'll stay or you'll keep going in the flow. And if you're staying, you're either way, you're breathing. <laughs> Long, smooth, easy breaths. Squeeze that block. Good. Let the thighs drop down. Let the chest lift up. The crown and the tail extend in opposite directions. And then as you're ready, inhale, press into the feet. And exhale, bring the strap down. And now we can release the strap and place it to the side. And place the block down. We're going to come to sit on the floor or you'll come and sit on the edge of the chair. You can do this either way, whichever is more comfortable for you. Get your blanket and make yourself a little bit of propping up for the hips. And we're going to take the legs wide, right? So that might be just a very small V wide. And, you know, see what, again, what your practice, what your hips, what your body is allowing and asking for today. The most important thing is that we have some lift 
out of this pelvic basin, right? So that the low back can be elongated. If it's, if it's too much on the low back to have the legs straight, you want to bend the knees. Maybe you'll take a block or a small, you can use um, uh, like a, a washcloth or a hand towel. That's, that might be for the future if you don't have them nearby, but you can work with props in this way. So always, I'm always giving these options because we don't need to make ourselves into something that fits the practice. We need to make the practice fit us. And that means finding whatever props we need to be comfortable and that might change from day to day and week to week. So allow the thigh bones to settle. You can even take the hands to the thighs right up to near where the thighs meet the hips and press the hands down. Give a little pressure downward on the thighs. Notice if that gives a little bit of ease to the belly and a little bit of length to the torso. So just like Miriam provided spiritual sustenance, provided this Maim Chaim, where for you are the living waters of this pose? Where's the nourishment? Notice, notice where you feel it. We can stay sitting up. You might choose to take the hands behind you on your fingertops, and draw the elbows toward each other and lift the heart. That's an option. Another option is you might take the hands in front of you, begin to fold forward. Walking your hands out, lengthening your spine. You might end up placing a, your head on the block or on the floor. Right, so see which option speaks to you. Taking a little Repose in the pose. Each breath lengthening, sustaining, and then falling away. Right, so it's, a, it's really a very worthy question for our practice at any time. Where is the, the air Miriam, Miriam's well? Where is the, is the, the wellspring? How is this nourishing? How is this furthering my, my life, my practice? Right. How is it lengthening my life energies, my, my chiyut? And then as you're ready, wherever you are, coming on back and bending the knees, bringing the legs together, and we'll come to lay on the back. You might take, take the blanket for some support under your head or lay it down if you want some, some cushion for your whole body. So coming on to the back and firstly keeping the knees bent, letting the soles of the feet rest and ground to the floor. And bend the elbows and take the hands to rest at the lower abdomen. And let the floor, 
meet you. Let the floor, let the earth give you some nourishment and some support, right? So all day we walk around doing things, hustling and bustling about, but for this moment, just drop into the floor. Let the floor receive you. Let it receive the spine, the pelvis, the feet. Let the floor receive the back of your head. Let the breath come and go as you feel and sense the belly and the chest rising and falling. Just dropping in, receiving Miriam's well. We're going to let the knees come a little bit side to side. And so that'll be on the exhale. So inhale. And as you exhale, let the knees drop to the right, maybe just a few inches. Just take them a little bit over. The feet are staying where they are. We're gonna inhale through center and exhale the knees over towards the left. So just letting the knees sway. Inhale through center and exhale over to the right. Going really slowly, really carefully. Inhale through center and exhale to the left. All right, so we're just, the feet stay where they are. They just roll to the inner and outer blades respectively. Keep this going in your own breath. Exhaling as you come over to each side and inhaling through the center. Notice the shift of weight across the back of the pelvis, across the low back. Let it be a nourishing massage to the lower back muscles. As you go side to side. Good. And then the next time the knees come over to the right, let them fall a little further and over as far as they want to go. You can even let that left hip come up. So you're on the outer blade of the right foot and the inner blade of the left foot. Just let the knees drop. And then if you like, you can take the left arm up to the diagonal corner. And really stretch simultaneously the left fingertips with the palm facing up towards the ceiling. Extend those left fingertips to the diagonal as you extend the left knee to the opposite diagonal, maybe even pressing down through the inner blade of that left foot so the left hip lifts up a little bit. To get a little more sensation in the thigh and the hip flexor if you would like. Just pausing here. Another option, if you'd like to stretch through the cervical spine, you can rock the head a little bit left to right, and then let the head rest uh, to the left and gaze up towards the left fingertips. So knees are going to the right and head to the left only if that's comfortable. And then as you're ready, unravel it, the head back up to center, soften through that left elbow, mm, let the knees return to center, and pause. Notice how you feel. 
Take an inhale here. And as you exhale, let the knees come over to the left side and come all the way over so that you're on the outer blade of the left foot and the inner blade of the right foot. Let the legs be heavy. Maybe the right hip comes off the floor. Absolutely let it move. And then take that right arm up towards the diagonal, palm facing up towards the ceiling. Spread open the fingertips and extend them long to the corner. So right fingertips to that diagonal corner and the right knee to the opposite diagonal. And now press into that inner blade of the right foot. Maybe a little more dynamic, lifting little through that right hip. Notice if there's any tendency to hold the breath. If so, back out and then come back into it. And then if you like turning the head a little bit towards the left, towards the right. A couple of times. And then letting it settle over the right shoulder and maybe gazing up towards those right fingertips. Find the length, the elongation of the torso. Let the earth hold you. And then as you're ready, unraveling, let the gaze come towards center, soften through the right elbow, bring the knees back up to center. And from here, if it's okay on your low back, we're going to extend the legs long. And if it's not okay on your low back, then keep a bend in those, in those knees and keep the soles of the feet on the floor. If it's okay for you, lengthen through the legs and take them even as wide as the mat or even a little wider, and the arms wide along the floor. So you're kind of making an X with the body. Inhale, fill the torso and exhale. Point the toes, extend the fingertips, lengthen in four directions. And then release, soften. Inhale, fill the body with air. Exhale, extend through the toes, through the fingertips. You can even wiggle the fingers and the toes. Good. And then soften, come back to center. And we'll melt right into our final relaxation. So can let the legs come a little closer together or bend the knees, soles of the feet to the floor or the lower legs on the chair, which gives a nice rest for the low back. Bring the arms by the sides and let the palms face up. And just come to stillness. Couple minutes. Just allow the body some silent nourishment. Nothing you have to do. Let go of any doing, of any activity. Just rest in stillness. Rest in the water element. The waters of life are in constant motion. And everything passes, changes, becomes something else. Joy, sadness, love, pain. Everything passes, changes, becomes something else. May practice and devotion hold us steady. 
And may the dance of the waters inspire our songs. Begin to deepen the breath. Wiggle the fingers and the toes as you begin to wake them back up. And slowly making your way to one side. Taking all the time you need and as you're ready, pressing up to a comfortable seat. Take your time. Feel the sense of fluidity of water element in the spine, in the skin, in your organs. And as we enter into this week of Parshat Chukat, may the sustenance of Miriam's leadership, may the life-giving force of Miriam's well continue to inform us, to sustain us, and to nourish us in ways both known and unknown as the week unfolds. Shavua Tov, and thanks for practicing as always. We'll be back next Monday. And again, please uh, register to join us on June 21st from 8 to 9 for our evening of gratitude. It'll be great to be together.